So one of my subscribers sent me a message the other day asking if I can pick up the Dell XPS 13 laptop and do a video on it. And I said, sure, why not? So I went to Best Buy and picked one up. I did spend a very good long weekend with the laptop and I was actually pretty impressed for the most part. The bezels are super thin on this and I did some gaming on it, I streamed some music and most importantly I got a lot of work done. So this video is basically my review and my one week experience with the Dell XPS 13 laptop. I hope you guys enjoy. So this is the non-touch Dell XPS 13 laptop, the 13 representing the screen size, a 13.3 inch 1080p matte display with super thin bezels. The laptop starts at $899 for the base model and Microsoft is actually having a sale right now. If you put in the code PCGRAD15 before you check out, you get $100 off your total price, which is a killer deal right now. So there are a few versions available. We got the basic non-touch Core i5 model with 128GB of SSD space that starts at $899 with two other options with more RAM, space, and even a better processor. For 80 bucks more, you can go with the Signature Edition, which includes Office 365. So the model I picked up is the base non-touch Core i5 model, clocked at 2.2 GHz with 4 GB of RAM, 128 GB of storage space, and an Intel HD graphics card. As I said before, the bezels are super thin. In fact, the XPS 13 is the world's smallest 13-inch laptop, which says a lot. The full aluminum body definitely contributes to its super light 2.6-pound weight. Popping it open, we are greeted with a carbon fiber type material for the armrest and a touch sensitive trackpad like the MacBook. I'm not really a laptop user, so it took me a few minutes to get used to tapping instead of pressing, but I soon found myself using nothing but the tap feature to navigate around. It's nice, but it's not 100% accurate. There will be times where it won't recognize me tapping the trackpad, but it's very rare and really doesn't bother me at all. What bothers me is using the trackpad as a mouse. It's not as smooth or responsive as I would expect from a well built laptop. Now I'm not sure if it's my particular model or from the software, but the trackpad just doesn't register my finger gesture as well. Sometimes it feels choppy and then there are times where the gesture is delayed and then there's the usual I just scrolled, why isn't it scrolling situation. So yeah, the trackpad could be definitely improved, maybe it's a lot more responsive on the i7 model. The keyboard however is great, the distance between each key press is short and very responsive with no lag whatsoever. I have pretty big hands so sometimes when I'm typing on a laptop my palms would get in the way of the trackpad and it would interfere with my typing so I'm forced to lift my palms up while I type on most laptops. However, on the XPS 13, I can easily rest them without it coming into contact with the trackpad, so definitely a huge plus there. The keys are nicely spaced and very convenient to reach. I do wish that the backspace button was a bit larger though, since that is the only key slightly out of reach, which forces me to reposition my hands while typing. Other than that, the keys are nicely lit at night and very comfortable to type with. Taking a look on the right side of the laptop, you can find a lock support, USB 3.0 slot, and a micro SD card reader. On the opposite side is where the charging port is located, followed by a mini display port, another USB 3, and your headphone or microphone jack. There's also a tiny button on the side here. When pressed, will indicate how much battery is left in the laptop. Taking a look on the bottom of the laptop is where the fans are located along with two long horizontal rubber feet which do a great job preventing the laptop from moving if you are typing on a solid flat surface. Then there's this flap thing which has the serial number and other very useless information written on there. Not sure if that's really necessary but I'm guessing they wanted to cover it up to be more aesthetically pleasing. Last but not least we have the front facing camera on the lower left of the laptop. So the Dell XPS 13 has a front-facing camera that can shoot in 720p. It's located on the bottom left of the laptop, which is a pretty weird location, but I get why they had to do that. The laptop is actually essentially bezel-less, so there's no other place to put the camera. But if you can get used to that, it's actually a pretty decent front-facing camera. Uh, the only thing I would suggest is to refrain from typing as you're talking to someone, because that would be pretty weird. I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to Windows 8 laptops, I really prefer to have a touchscreen feature. 
it just makes it really easy to navigate and it's one of the reasons why I really like the Surface 3. Thankfully there is Start 8, which is basically a Windows start bar for Windows 8. I use this on all my PCs, I must have a start menu when I'm using Windows 8 otherwise it drives me nuts. For some reason the logo glitched when I installed it on the laptop but usually the start menu logo is supposed to appear down here like the usual. I will leave a link to where you can download it for yourself down below. Personally when it comes to Windows laptops I would opt for the touchscreen version since I really do enjoy using that instead of the trackpad but for the rest of us that picked up a non touchscreen version the start menu edition will definitely make your life a lot easier. Alright so let's talk about the display. Instead of a glossy display which will bring you more vivid color more contrast along with deeper blacks, you get an anti-glare coating which helps prevent reflections. This is especially important if you're going to use a laptop in bright areas or even outside under direct sunlight. But I gotta say, for a matte display, the colors are very sharp and vibrant. You also get really great viewing angles, so if you and your buddy want to watch an episode of Game of Thrones together, there will be no visual distortion. Text also looks sharp, there is no blur or distortion even when scaling. Brightness is also great on the XPS 13, even at maximum brightness you still get vivid colors and it doesn't appear to be washed out at all. In super low light modes you can dim it all the way down while still being able to see everything clearly. Productivity wise I think that 13 inches is the perfect screen size as long as you are not editing. If you need a laptop for editing I would say either 14 or better yet a 15 inch laptop so you can take advantage of the extra screen real estate. If you need a laptop specifically for mobility and watching videos with internet browsing I would say anywhere between 10 to 12 inches would suffice. For the rest of us students in particular I would say 13 inches is the sweet spot. The screen is large but not large enough where it becomes bulky and heavy to carry around and it's compact enough to carry in your backpack or bag throughout the entire day. Since it has a mini display port you can hook it up to your larger monitor if you need a bigger screen to work on. You can either duplicate your own screen or extend it and use it like a second monitor. As long as you keep the resolution at 1080p there won't be any lag. Anything past that is a disaster. Alright so now for performance. The i5 is great for most things but lag is still present. It's especially obvious and annoying when scrolling through long web pages. That's basically where I notice it the most. When it comes to multitasking, it performs really well. It plays videos up to 2K resolution smoothly, even with multiple windows open in the background. I was actually impressed that it was able to handle Bioshock Infinity at a consistent 30fps. I mean sure, the graphics were set to low, but still, for a core i5 Ultrabook, that is pretty damn good. I don't see why you can't play some of your favorite games on the XPS 13, granted that you lower the settings of course. So after playing for about 20 to 30 minutes, the fans kicked up to maximum and the laptop got really warm. It didn't get to a point where it was hot, but warm enough where I could feel the heat emitting from the keys. I found myself constantly taking breaks as the keys would get uncomfortably warm for my fingertips. I played Bioshock Infinity on 50% brightness for about an hour and I noticed that it drained 30% of battery life so I would assume you would get anywhere from 2-3 to three hours of battery life if you were gonna game non-stop. Of course that would depend on your power plan and level of brightness. This was really the only time that the fans kicked up 100% and they were pretty loud. Gaming aside, the laptop got me a solid 10.5 hours of use. So I dedicated my entire day using the Dell XPS 13. My morning started at 10.30am with 100% charge and the laptop died on 8.34pm same day. The brightness was set to 50% and it never turned off. I used the laptop for browsing the web, writing the script for this video, streaming Spotify in the background and I watched a total of 30 minutes of video on YouTube. I did not do any gaming as that does drain the battery life a lot faster. So I'm pleased to say that the battery life is outstanding on the XPS 13 if you're focused on productivity and not CPU or GPU intensive tasks. So besides the heating situation when gaming and the backspace button being small and out of reach with the inconsistency of the trackpad, I would say that this is an awesome laptop for the price, especially since you can get 100 bucks off right now. I don't think you can find a better deal anywhere else when it comes to 13 inch laptops. It's super compact thanks to its super sexy thin bezels, it has great performance and the battery life is outstanding for productivity. If you're looking for a 13 inch laptop for school or productivity and some light gaming on the side, then the Dell XPS 13 is the one for you. If you don't care for gaming and want a smaller more portable laptop then you should check out my review of the Surface 3 which is a laptop and a tablet in one that has a 10 inch screen. 
I will leave a link to that in the description section if you guys want to check that out. So anyways, that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like the video. If you didn't, you can dislike. And overall, I got to say that this is a very solid laptop for the price point. If you guys use a $100 discount, then you get an even better deal on an awesome looking 13 inch laptop. If you guys are looking for something slightly larger than the 13 inch laptop, then you guys should check out the Lenovo Flex 3. It's a 14 inch screen and for the same price, you get double the RAM, the same processor and more space. You also get 8 gigabytes of SSD space. And I'll leave a link to that in the description section if you guys want to check that out. But as far as the 13 inch range, that is a solid laptop to go with. Anyways, thanks again for watching. If you guys want me to review a different laptop or product, definitely let me know by dropping a comment down below. But anyways, this is Ed from TechSource. I will see you guys in the next video.